What is up, my fine fellow gamers, and welcome to Children of a Dead Earth, the realistic space combat simulator. Today, we're looking at the Bistro class Mega Carrier. Now, I will be the first to admit, this is not, this carrier is not quite mega yet. It is still a work in progress, but allow me to show you the foundations of something that will be mega. This ship stems from my desire to create a weapons platform that launches drones that launch drones. This ship is armed with two DLD systems, the Drone Launch Drone System. I'll go over the specific drones in a minute, but for now we're going to focus on the Mega Carrier. So we have two of those, each launching, how many is it? Five times two, so ten drones each. Launching a total of ten DLD drones. Four KKV MK3 missile launchers launching some kinetic kill vehicles that I designed in a previous video. I think I might ultimately put these onto another drone launched platform, but we are not quite there yet. We have three 25 member crew modules chilling out at the front of the ship, away from all of the nasty and deadly radiation. Going down the length of the ship, we have many armored 800 ton decaying tanks, and finally, well, not finally, we have our 39.1 megawatt fission reactor. I don't need quite so much power. Actually, I should probably uh, design a special reactor solely for this ship, but for now the 39.1 megawatt will do. And, well, I might need the extra megawatt actually if I decide, decide to add some, say, point defense lasers onto this ship. So, I mean, it's still a work in progress. And then, of course, we have six 5.3 kilometer per second decayed gimbaled nuclear thermal rockets. We have a total delta V of 5.97 kilometers per second. I think I would like to bring that up to 10 kilometers per second eventually. Our acceleration is pitiful. I hate having low acceleration ships, but since this is a carrier, it is all right. Because I take solace in the fact that the drones themselves have excellent acceleration performance. We come in at a, a, a very cheap 52.8 MC. I was kind of surprised at how cheap the ship was. But of course, we have virtually no armor. I'm not entirely convinced that a carrier should be completely armorless, so I might add some armor in one day, but I'm not exactly sure what approach I want to take. So this is the Bistro class mega carrier. This is the DLD, drone launch drone. A uh, very large drone. We have two of these 10 megawatt drone one launchers for a total of 20 drones that we can launch. We are, of course, using decaying fuel. We have an excellent 6.5. 76 kilometers per second of delta v and 1.74 g's of acceleration and we have our tiny we have a 15 megawatt thermal electric fission reactor but i'm not sure we could probably i mean there could certainly be some optimization around here but that is the the beginnings of my first drone that launches drones and it would be pretty cool to have another drone that launches this drone and then have that be launched by the mega carrier but I mean, the, the whole point is to have a multi-stage system to maximize your Delta V. Because, of course, the drones that we launch from here... Well, let's go take a look at those drones. Those are the Drone 1. The Drone 1 from a previous video. Here it is. And this, of course, itself has 6.16 kilometers per second of Delta V and 3 Gs of acceleration. So having this multi-stage system really allows these drones to get around, to go places that other drones cannot. Say you're fighting around Jupiter and you need lots of Delta V to get to all the different places of the system. You know, it's not like you're fighting around an amateur type asteroid. You need lots of Delta V. So let us enter into the sandbox now. We will add one Beast Pro Mega Carrier for our enemy. We will add a gunship Mark II. Enter Sandbox. Here we are. The Jovian system, the Galilean goons, Jupiter, king of the planets. We are here to fight and it will watch and decide who is the victor and who has fought properly. So here we are with our Bistro Mega Carrier. There's that Jupiter. One slice of Jupiter. So just to demonstrate, of course, say, let's pretend we were a gunship and we wanted to intercept the enemy gunship. We'd have to sort of mess with our trajectory. And already, we've spent 2.5 kilometers per second of Delta V. It is just ridiculous the amount of Delta V you'd have to spend to try and get an intercept 
But we don't want to spend the Delta V of our carrier, so let's launch some drones instead. Now, we have 10 DLDs that we can launch. I think we will launch three because my drones, they don't really have a... Uh, they have the railgun. The railguns have a hard time getting through the armor. Whoa! 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 What are you- whoa! Everything's alright. I just have to hit the back button, and then everything is alright. See? There they are in a nice formation. So yeah, the, the railguns on my drones have a hard time getting through this gunship armor, but in this case, quantity really makes up for the lack of quality. Because of course, I have a 4 km per second muzzle velocity railgun with a very low mass round, and they just get destroyed by the diamond whipple shield that these gunships have for armor. And of course, there are tons of other layers of armor. So let's try and set up our intercept. So okay, we have the opportunity for an intercept here. So that intercept is going to cost 6, point, uh, 6 kilometers per second of Delta V, which we cannot afford. But my other drones can, so let's see. Let me try and mess with the trajectory some more. Now, I certainly could have gone with that first intercept because uh, I would be able to launch my drones from the DLD and then those drones would have been able to make the intercept. We don't care that the, the DLD can't come, come along. We just need the DLD to get the drones into position. But I decided to do some more exploring, see if we could find a different type of intercept that might be better. Okay, I think this is what we want. So, I mean, for our main drone ship to try and intercept, they would not have enough Delta V, but once we get on this trajectory, we can launch our, our sub-drones, our drone ones, and then they will be able to make the 4.26 km per second Delta V intercept. So, yeah, my frame of reference is the gunship right now. If we go back to Jupiter, we can see what this looks like. So, yeah, we're coming in close around Jupiter, and we're going to come in like so. And then we'll have the chance to intercept four days and eight hours from now. So let's run this. Let's go one day at a time. Oh, and there's uh, one of the moons. Yeah, there's Io. I thought I recognized that orangey yellow hue. All right, well, at this point, I think we should launch some of our drones. Let's, uh... Let's launch 20 drone ones. So, I mean, the DLDs got us this far. Now we can use the drone ones to do an intercept. And they have enough Delta V to make that particular intercept. 20 drones are on their own now. Let's see if we can do something a little different with the other DLDs. So we, we still have 40 more drones to launch. Let's launch the rest of them. Our DLDs are now empty. So we have 40 more drones. So I can have them also do the exact same intercept as the other drones, or maybe I could try and do something a bit different. Just try and get a, a different intercept on the enemy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's adjust our trajectory like that. See if we can do that intercept. All right, that'll be great. And we'll have tons of Delta V for maneuvering in the fight. So we have two intercepts set up. The first one has 20 drones. So here is our first intercept with our 20 drones. We have a flyby of 16 seconds. Our range is 37.4 kilometers compared to the gunship. And the gunship, their lasers have a range of 35 kilometers. So, I mean, their lasers are going to be able to probably do some pretty good damage against me. Certainly, they'll be able to fire. Let's uh, actually target the enemy lasers. Let's take out those lasers. Because their lasers can take out my railguns. Wow. Okay, we are on target. We've destroyed one enemy laser. And some coil guns. Did we take out both enemy lasers? And we're, fire we're retaliating. Let's uh, target their radiators now that we have... We're looking at the back side of their ship. All right, well, our drones are done for. But yeah, we took out a fair amount of the enemy weapons. I mean, we didn't really penetrate the armor, but just the sheer amount of railgun fire allowed us to strip off so many enemy weapons. 
Oh, but they have one violet laser left, so that could be problematic. I think they have they had two lasers, two violent lasers, and we took out one of them. So now we have our 40 drones coming up for the next engagement. Yep, and there's... Let's see what they try and do. Of course, the enemy could evade, but I have them set for a balanced behavior, and, and generally they don't evade when they're set for balanced behavior. See, so yeah, let's uh, target their lasers, of course. And let's just target all their weapon systems. Well, I mean, we'll have a hard time getting through the armor, so there's no point in going for a, a massive kill. But we can take out all their weapons and render them useless. Coming in, you can see those uh, purple dots, those purple meatballs in the formation of my ships. That's the enemy violent lasers targeting and destroying my railguns, so they can do some damage to me. I'm not impervious or anything like that. And those are, of course, tracers from Railgun Fire. They're not lasers. Well, I think we fairly effectively rocked this ship. Are there any... They have one nuclear rocket left. I mean, see how we haven't even really penetrated their armor. But, oh, they still have some weapon systems left. Okay, so that, that was a round of 60 drones, one wave after the other. We got these DLDs just floating around in space, completely useless. Oh, look at- oh, oh, uh, two drones actually survived. And they still have Delta V left. We could pro probably set up another intercept. This one has no railgun, though. It got shot off. And this one is also out of railgun. That is too bad. But how is the enemy gunship doing? I mean, I don't get why they're spinning like that. They still have an engine that looks like it's working. Confusing. Confusing, to say the least. Okay, well, we still have our our Omega Carrier. So let's, uh, it's a shame that we have to... Oh, you know what we should do? Let's uh, use our KKVs. Because we don't want to waste an entire DLD just to finish off this ship. I'm not sure how many KKVs we'll need. I'm not even sure if they'll have enough Delta V to make it. Yes, this is going to be good. Okay, so we have 140 KKVs. You know what? If we can't... Yeah, if we can't uh, get an intercept, then maybe we can bring our carrier in a bit closer. I ended up setting the frame of reference to the enemy gunship, and then I picked a path in my trajectory which would allow me to do a small burn to try and get an intercept. Yes, we've plotted an intercept with our KKVs. This should be pretty good. We set our frame of reference. This is what it looks like in actuality. So our missiles... I mean, we're going to orbit around uh, Jupiter for quite a, th quite a time. Let's see, let me select my KKV. So my KKVs are on this trajectory. They're going to go here. Looks like they're going to burn and then come around all the way in. And then they're going to intercept with the enemy gunship in 18 days. Okay, we got some waiting to do. Yeah, we're orbiting around multiple times to uh, wait until the position is correct. Because I'd use the, uh, the frame of reference tool to set up this intercept. And, okay, yeah, we are we are on our approach now. Right, this, I wonder how this is going to work. Oh my god, what the heck is this? How come we're right there? Well, that was interesting to say the least, but we did it. The enemies are no longer a threat. Congratulations, everyone. We have won, again, medals and promotions all around. Good luck with your own Children of Dead Earth ship designing, and I hope to see you next time. Consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching.